bit confused. Uh, I'm at the end of the Weaver navigation, about as far as you can actually get. And I don't think I can get any further. This swing bridge, there's a sign on it that says it's private property beyond there, so yeah, not going to be able to get any further. So let's just go back, shall we? Just on the left here, as we turned round, would have been the Runcorn and Western Canal. Built in 1859, the Runcorn and Western Canal, it's two and a half miles and it linked the Weaver up to the Bridgewater Canal at Runcorn itself, but it did so via a set of locks which are still out of action today and are, there are plans to regenerate it um, via the Runcorn Locks Restoration Society, although there's nothing I can find about the regeneration of the Runcorn and Western Canal itself. You know, some of the canals that were in operation a long time ago simply aren't these days. There are thousands of more miles of canal back in the day than there are operating now. That's my landing point where I can moor up. Um, not because I'm intending to use the lock, but because I'm just going to overnight here. Because the weather is shite! Despite it being the middle of May, everything feels quite wintry. I'm soaked through, so I need to dry off. But also, yeah, it's a little bit chilly, as some people like to say. Not me, though, I'd never say that. This is the Manchester Ship Canal, looking out from the point at which it joins the River Weaver. And in the distance you can see the River Mersey. And it all seems to flow in the same direction. Off to the top right there, that would be the direction I would take to get to Manchester. Okay, so why am I... Okay, so I'm mooring up here on this holding platform, whatever they call it which is normally reserved for boats going on to the Manchester Ship Canal the next day. I'm not going to go on the Manchester Ship Canal because, yeah, I'm protesting against Peel, who own the Manchester Ship Canal, and they're charging extortionate amounts of money. Um, all in all, I think it's 150 quid if I wanted to go to Manchester from here. Um, and I've got to get an inspection, which will cost another 100 odd quid from some of the people that I spoke to. And... Um, Many of the people on the list of approved surveyors wouldn't even answer their phones or were too far away or had even retired in some cases. So I just couldn't get anyone to inspect my boat so that it was seaworthy in the eyes of Peel. So it just wasn't going to happen, was it really? I did try and then I just thought, oh, sod it. There's too much faffing around. From friends' minimal list, they've got a good video on the Manchester Ship Canal and so is Cruising the Cut. Um, Watch that if you want to see what it's really like. But um, yeah, some people have said to me, yeah, it's all right. It's just, it's a long old slog. About 30 odd miles of just plodding along in the middle of that, going past uh, warehouses and wharves that have just fallen down and more of the modern side of industrial, I wouldn't even call it heritage, just industry that's just been forgotten about. But this, We've just come to this, this is what I love. I'm gonna get down in there and see if there's anything washed up that I can at least use on my fire as firewood or hmm, maybe reappropriate for use inside the cabin or outside. There's gotta be some fenders in here somewhere. I 
have to say there's not a lot down here. Football, some balls, a lot of those tennis balls that dogs like. What's that? Marker. <laughs> Loads of plastic bottles. I don't know what that is. Oh, actually, I do know what that is. That's from a life ring. Keeps it in place when it's not being used. That is a very, very tall heel. Jesus. Um, what else have we got? Not a lot, really. Just a load of midges lying around. I'll take my firewood anyway, that's always useful. Driftwood firewood is some of the best. Oh my god, there's so much more over there. What's going on down here? I can see a bunny rabbit and a rat, but that was about it. A load of stuff washed up down there, but this According to that sign is ICI property. ICI are the company that run, I think, run that uh, wharf right at the end that I couldn't get to, the docks there. Or at least they own it. I don't know, it's difficult to keep up with it all really. Especially as the guides that I use just go out of date so quickly. But that's private land, so I better get back. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know. I didn't know, yeah, you can't, can't get me. It's morning, and I had a nice restful morning here. It's very, very quiet, but I just need some coffee. And then we can crank it. Let's crank it. going under Frodsham Viaduct. This thing's got four of these arches and we're just going to go underneath one of them. The other one would, another one of them would go under over the, um, the actual River Weaver which veers off over in that way. But what's most exciting about this stretch here is we've got this bridge, we've got a swing bridge, Sutton swing bridge, and then we've got the Danny Adamson. So we have a little look inside? Let's go. The Daniel Adamson is a steam tugboat and I've never been on one of those before. So I'm very excited just to go in there and see how it all works and pretend that I understand it. But before we do that, I really want to thank a few people on my Crank It crew. Filling a page of my Crank It crew book this time are Caroline, Mark and Fletch, the dog. Ian Armstrong, he's a producer, so he gets little flags there. Deborah J. Burton, Henry Rothery, Derek Stoddart, Leanne and Jim Blankman, 
Richard Maybury. He gets flags for being a producer as well. So does Daniel Culture and Darren Hancock. Thank you all so much. Got Robbie Clark, Nick Hyam, Robert Brailsford, Chris Cole is a top producer of the vlog. Jonathan Thomas, John Hilliard, Larry Chapman, Aidy Lees, another producer, Jim Kane, Kev Mosby, and producer Michael Pilling to complete the billing. Thank you all so very much. I love you guys. You're the best thing that's ever happened. <coughs> Just up these steps, this is the, one of the captains, yeah. where the captain would stand and steer the boat from. That's amazing. What of you? So this, all it does was it was basically steer it and then you'll call down with instructions. Yeah, with this. Do with that, brilliant, look at that. We can't, re we can't reply down there, but you just, you just sit there and there's a deal full ahead. Bring it round. But you do it, you do it. But once twice just to double confirm it. Cool. Does that take another person to do that? You've got to have two people up yeah. there. Yeah. You've got camel wheel. Two man job. Um, oh, 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 it's 2021. <laughs> <laughs> So I can say that I've been the at the wheel, in the wheelhouse, on the Danny Adamson. Get that right, on the Danny Ann. <laughs> on the Danny Adamson, there we go. Captain Robbie reporting. So who has to be down there? You have to be down there pulling the levers then. Oh, not me. Not you. Any one of us can do that. <laughs> What's the name of your boat? Something lass? Naughty lass, Naughty yeah. Naughty lass, yeah. Okay. Do you know the actual engines? That's Two what them. gives the propulsion. Yeah, right. twin compound direct drive. Same age as the boat, 1903. Wow. This is where the magic happens, isn't it? Turn around. Come and have a quick okay. look. I love that smell. Yeah. Oil and what have you. <laughs> Tell you what, you can't socially distance in here, can you? <laughs> We've all had two. We've all had two. That's how many of you have to be down here when you're operating? When you're actually on the on, underway? To actually run, all you need is two in here and two in there. Okay. But we actually run with three in here and four in there because none of us are getting any younger. In I initially boiler, thought, who would want to be down here whilst you're chugging along, but it's fascinating. I wouldn't be anywhere else. Yeah. This is the best place. Yeah. So it's, it, it's a compound engine. So uh, it's, it's not a triple expansion. So it's a, a, an HP and an LP. Right. And this is the uh, this is the valve here. And when something goes wrong, how do you troubleshoot? <laughs> <laughs> you listen for noises. You use the back of your hand to go around checking for temperatures. We do have a thermometers on the uh, feed into the boiler again. If they shoot up, we know we've got a little bit of a a little bit of tweaking and fiddling to do on the condenser. You know, to get it uh, sorted again. So you just, yeah, you, you use your common sense. You use your common time. sense and <laughs> you tend to get a feel for, for what's going on and you know what to keep your eye on. So steam comes in through the top, mm. circulates through the, around oh, the water tube, which are here, which the water gets fed through the tubes. Mm. The, the steam goes around the tubes, condenses, falls to the bottom, that's gets pumped amazing. back that's into the boiler. So it's conser conserving the water, conserving the steam. Unlike a steam loco on a railway, there's always a water tower at each station that you keep topping up. Yeah. But when you go out on the Mersey, there's nothing like that. So right. You've got to be much more efficient with the steam. Oh, so we've got all this gear for reusing the water and steam. And you need pure water. Now, I know a lot of boaters who yeah. worry about um, having pressurised heating systems on board. Well, this is another game, isn't it? <laughs> it didn't go all the yeah. well, yeah. You see, there's not much room. There's not much room and there's a lot going on in here. And yeah, a lot going on. You've told me how it all works, but I've immediately, it's gone. <laughs> no, so I'm glad you guys are doing it, not me. So it used to be called the Ralph Brockle Bank. <laughs> so that's what it looked like. And, and you've sort of faithfully reproduced it here. Yeah. Amazing. So that mirror, isn't it? Right there, brilliant. Where's the bar then? Is that going to be this bit that's, here? That's bar, yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Off. That's pub of the week. <laughs> oh, well, the bar's closed uh, and the boat's not moving today. It would have been good to see it underway.
But if you'd like to see more of this boat and a much better made video, go to Foxes Afloat's YouTube channel. Pleasure to be on board. Stay safe, happy You too. Thanks again for letting me come on board. Thanks. Full steam ahead! We're just passing the Frodsham arm of the Weaver Navigation and I've been told this used to link to the Manchester Ship Canal but it's disused beyond Frodsham Lock. And for fans of Foxes Afloat, I know there are a lot of you, that's their boat just there, Silver Fox. I've got to say this, it's quite awkward when uh, fellow vloggers meet for the first time because you're not sure whether they're going to be like filming you or whether you should be filming them and what I've heard of um, those two guys is they are actually quite private they don't want people like you know looking in their windows all the time but I mean that is the price you pay if you are putting your life out on the internet and in my case you know TV as well it's just like I the currency is privacy that you're giving away and you just got to accept that some people will stare some people will shout and wave frantically at you it's just part of it <laughs> now when i passed uh, foxes afloat they did say don't take our mooring because they've just left this place which is called devil's garden and it looks like heaven to me. I can see Fran and Rich over there. They've moored up, so uh, let's go and see what they think of it. Maybe they can give us a little tour. Ooh. We're unmoored near Fran and Rich of floating our boat. Um, there is a pub nearby, but I can't be asked. So I'm just gonna have a pint of Guinness on board. Is this a pint? It's 500 milliliters, 4.2%. So surprisingly weak Guinness because you'd think, oh, it's a stout. That'll be oh, extra stout, it says. That'll be really, yeah, quite potent. But actually it's uh, pretty light, guys. Anyway, from a can, not as good as uh, obviously getting it from the keg. But whatever, let's just chuck it in a glass and eat it. Eat it, it is a meal, but I'm gonna drink it. It's a meal, what you can drink. Oh yeah, pouring a Guinness. There's an art to it, but from a can, you just, you just pour it in. I know in pubs they wait, but uh, I'm not, I'm not just gonna bung it all straight in. There we go, I've got a little bit left actually. Let's get the last bit in there. Oh yeah, lovely. Right, Oof, what a day is cranking. Thanks for watching this video. Cheers. It's just Guinness, get it down. Sometimes I like to put my little pinky out. What I like about Guinness is it is so light and uh, even from a can or from a bottle, or whatever, it's all pretty much the same thing, isn't it? I mean, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. There's going to be a war of comments saying, no, you can only drink Guinness from Ireland in a pub. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hey, according to Fran, you can eat some of this tree. They're really good. If you're heavy hearted, they're supposed to make you feel better. Oh, immensely. I feel so free <laughs> and easy and light.